Welcome to Death House with Thomas Gunn and today we're going to be making a plum cake or a Pflaumenkuchen. So this is a, another version of the apple streusel cake. This is a tr traditional German cake. We're going to be making a dough that's made with quark and oil. So in German it's called a Quarköl Teig, which is a quark oil dough. Um, if you cannot find quark, and this is quark, so let me show this to you. So um, here you see it's called fresh cheese quark, Q-U-A-R-K. So if you can find this, that's what you want to use. Um, it usually comes in a more um, uh, smooth and a chunkier version. Get the smooth version if you can. Uh, alternatively, if you cannot find quark, uh, you know, you could use cream cheese, but cream cheese is a lot denser. Hold on, I'm going to get a spoon just to show you the consistency of quark. Quark. So as you can see, quark is not quite as dense as cream cheese. So if you use cream cheese, I suggest whipping it and adding about a tablespoon of milk just to get the consistency not as thick or dense. Um, conversely, you could use, uh, sorry, that's just my oven preheating. You could use ricotta. So if you use ricotta, get the smooth kind. If you can't get the smooth kind, just um, put it in a, your kitchen machine with a whisk attachment or in a food processor just to get it smooth and use the same amount of ricotta instead of the quark. All right, so we're going to make the dough first. So for the dough, we need an eighth of a liter of milk, an eighth of a liter of oil, which I have combined here. I'm just using regular canola oil. You need a pinch of salt, there we go. We need 100 grams of sugar. That's just regular sugar. We need 200 grams of the quark or a substitute if you're using a substitute. So we're going to give this a whisk just to get this all blended. There we go. So the only other thing you're going to need is 400 grams of flour and three teaspoons of baking powder. So we're just going to add that. I'm going to use a wooden spoon. So in that goes and that's it for the dough. Right guys? It couldn't be simpler. So. We're going to get this all combined and then this we're going to put into a sheet pan. So a regular sheet, baking sheet. And you're just going to press this into the pan with your hands. It's not a difficult process. In the meantime, you could be preheating your oven. So. This is a bit of muscle here. Preheating your oven to 350 degrees. So see, this all comes together relatively easily. Give it a few good mashes so that the flour is well incorporated. And there we go. So now we're going to get our baking sheet. baking sheet here. Get yourself some flour nearby because the dough is a bit sticky so you might want to dip your hand in flour occasionally. So what I do is I take a bit of dough, just tap my hands in flour so they're not as sticky and just press this in. Leave a little bit of a rim here but don't make it too thick because there is baking powder in here, so this will rise and it will get thicker. 
So if you leave the edge too thick, you're going to have a really thick crust. So we're just going to keep doing this until we have the whole baking sheet covered. So while I'm doing this, I'll talk to you about the plums we're going to use. So typically, the way that uh, my family always did this is with Italian plums. Those are the plums that are a little bluer in color and they're a little more oval in shape. They're like a blue purpley color. So you could use Italian plums, you could use Damson, that's D-A-M-S-O-N plums, which are also more of that blue purple color. Unfortunately, I went to every grocery store in the area and maybe because of the, you know, virus situation, we're not getting as much um, variety as perhaps normally. So I could not find those plums. So I just picked up, I don't even know the name, regular, here, I'm going to show you one. Let me just finish this. So I have a little extra left and I can see that it's a little thin in some areas. So I'm just going to put that on in those areas where I see some of the baking pan peeking through. A little there and a little there. So there we go. So now just give it a nice pat. Make sure your edge is good. And you can basically feel with your hands that it's kind of all level. So there we go, the dough is done. Now we're gonna move on to the plums. I'll show you those. So these are the plums I'm using. For this size, I end up, I don't even know if you can see the color. They're a really dark uh, maroon color. Let me see if the name is on here, what type they are. And it's not. Anyway, just your regular plum. Uh, I've cut those up into quarters. Here you can see, there's the color on the inside. So these are like a red. You know what guys? I just had a brainstorm. Let me adjust the brightness. There you go. So these are the plums I've got. This is the color. So now you're going to make a layer. Just a single layer. If you're using the uh, Italian plums, those you can typically just cut into half. Take the pit out and put them uh, cut side up onto your dough. Okay, so I'm going to continue doing this. So as you can see, these aren't, you know, they don't have to be that uniform. Some pieces seemed a little big, so I did it into, you know, fifths instead of quarters. You just want to put it down so that the entire surface of the cake is covered. When you're buying your plums, don't pick the softest ones because these will get softer as they bake. You don't want it to be a total mush. You do want there to be some bite left to your plums. I'm gonna let you know how many plums I ended up using. I'm gonna see if what I cut up is actually enough. So we're gonna do this, and then on top of this, we'll go a traditional streusel which is typically just, uh, you know, butter, flour, sugar. I'll give you the ingredients in a second. And streusel actually means to strew. So I guess the name comes from, you know, strewing that, uh, those ingredients on top of the cake. So that's why they're called streusel. So we don't say streusel. For anybody wondering, the EU makes an OI sound, so it's streu, streusel. 
not Strusel. Strusel would be the um, North American way of pronouncing that. So I'm going to need to cut up another one. So this was, by the way, 12 plums. I'm going to cut up another one. I'll do that right here. That way I don't have to pause the video. If I can do this real quick for you guys. So there's one half cut into quarters. There's another quarter. I'm cutting out the pit. Another one. I'm going to have to cut one more up. So now we're at 14. So for this size and for the size of plums I have, this will have been 14 plums, but you know, it's going to vary on the size of your pen, the size of the plums. I mean, I think this is a regular sized cookie sheet, but I mean, I'm pretty sure cookie sheets come in different sizes. So let me just cut this last one. There we go, get that on there. You know what, why waste this last half, this last quarter, let's get this guy on here somewhere. I'm gonna cut it again into eights. I see a bare spot here, another one here. There we go. So that's the cake with the plums and the dough. Now we're gonna move on to the streusel. I'm gonna take the same bowl that I had to make the dough. That's fine, you don't need to uh, dirty yourself another pan. So before I start, you're gonna need vanilla sugar. Um, here in Canada, Montreal specifically, this is readily available in all the grocery stores. You can find vanilla sugar. If you cannot, find vanilla sugar. That was one package, by the way. Uh, you could use, you know, a liquid vanilla flavoring. Um, I would probably use probably, let's say, half a teaspoon. Uh, you don't want to add too much liquid to this because the streusel, you want it crumbly. So in addition to the uh, vanilla sugar, you need 300 grams of flour, 150 grams of sugar, all right, so that's what I've got combined here already. You will need a pinch of cinnamon. If you hate cinnamon or are allergic to cinnamon, just omit it. You know, you don't have to add the cinnamon. And you need 200 grams of butter. So I'm going to get my butter. I'm have it, I had it get uh, warm out of the fridge, but it got a little soft, so I put it back in the fridge just to firm up a bit. Let me get that out. So let me get this little paper off. And the rest of the paper, so like I said, this is 200 grams. Sometimes depending on, depending on the... Um, and you're just going to mix this with your hands, break it up. So sometimes, depending on the temperature, your flour may absorb more than at other times. So you might have to sometimes adjust the butter to flour ratio. But what you want in the end is something that will hold together when you squeeze it in the palm of your hand, but that will also uh, break apart easily so that it has a crumble to it. So we're just going to get this really well combined. Just squeeze it together with your hands and then break it apart. Squeeze, break apart. Squeeze, break apart. You could be doing this with a pastry cutter. You could be doing this with two knives or, you know, fork or... But you know, your hands work easy. They work fast. It gives you a good feel of how the crumble is, if it's good. This crumble is going to be good. So you see here how it's holding together when I squeeze it. But when you apply pressure, it just crumbles apart. That's what you want. And it should go into a, an oven that's preheated already, okay? Otherwise, your all this butter will start to melt. And it won't crisp up as quickly as it should, 
Hold on a sec, look at that. I found a piece from my butter wrapping. So that would not have been nice for whoever bit into that, especially if they have a filling. All right, so there we go. Crumbles are done. Let's go back to our cake. So you're gonna get your cake. You're gonna take your streusel and we're going to, what are we gonna do folks? We're going to streusel. So there we go. You want to leave chunks. You don't want this in, you know, little pieces. You want streusel to have bite. You want streusel to have, a, you know, a bigger size so that it gives crunch. So you're just going to do this with all the streusel. Try to get to the edges. Try to cover every area. If you see anything that's bare, get some streusel over there. You can move it around as you're going. Like I said, do make sure to get to the edges. We used to, as kids, when this would come out of the oven, everybody would try to sneak a piece of streusel, but it would leave a bare spot so my mother would always know that we had gotten to it. So there we go. I've used it all up. Just looking where I need some more. If I should spread some, like here. That's good. Looks good to me. So, there we go. I'm just going to take this little bit, squeeze it. So this will now go into an oven, 350 degrees, for about 20 minutes. You do want to see your streusel take on a slightly golden color. So if after 20 minutes it's still very pale, and I'll tell you if I end up doing this, um, you can put it on broil, but for God's sakes, don't do what I do, which is walk away and forget and then start to wonder what that burning smell is. And then realize that holy expletive, you've put it on broil and now it's burned. So when you put this on broil, if you need to, to crispen up, crispen up the streusel a little bit, stay nearby. Keep an eye on it. So this is going in an oven now for 20 minutes. I'm gonna let you guys know if I need to broil it. And once it's done, I'll come back and we'll have a quick chat and I'll say goodbye after that. All right, so here we go. The cake's out of the oven and it actually was in the oven for 35 minutes instead of 20. And then I had it on broil for about another minute just to get the top of it darker because as you can see, the edge of the crust here is getting dark enough. So I didn't want that to get any darker. So, and there you go. So here's the traditional German Streuselkuchen, Streusel cake uh, with plums. Give this a try, I'm sure you'll like it. And uh, have yourselves a great day. Bon appétit, guten appétit. Bye-bye.